M0FXB, let's unbox the H4M Hack RF1 SDR receiver and transceiver. Let's just get everything out of the box. We've gone for the bundle. You can see the H2M in the distance, uh, just to give you an idea of what we've got. But the H4M has some extra additional features and hardware. You're going to need yourself a 32 GB SD card, but fear not, you can update the firmware just using a browser. We've got lots of antennas here. This thing goes right up to 6 gigahertz. They give you an array of antennas to cover all the different bands. So you've got air band, APRS, marine band, VHF, UHF, even covers all the HF bands with an STR color waterfall screen. Uh, the reason, and I don't think they include the, the 32 GB SD card that I'm going to use here. You load the firmware onto this, just slide it on, and then just tell the, the H4M to import to that firmware. And then you've got the latest firmware. After that, with this model, USB-C, connect it to the PC or your browser. And once you, you have the correct process, it will just update everything for you. It's almost like a table top you know, i don't know hack device of course it does transmit and receive and you do need to make sure you don't transmit on bands that are illegal in your country because you'll get into trouble it will even detect your wi-fi your bluetooth signals uh, there's the unit so it in size it's virtually identical to the previous model this is how it comes you've got that extra switch for power on top you've got a switch for the whether you're going to use a speaker it says actually says mic or extension and then you've got your power on off to stop the battery from draining USB C charging 3.5 jack you've got your antenna port at the top there the new the big new thing is the GPIO expansion port which I think is called the R10C um, R I O C or R one O C, but anyway, and then there's there's further firmware stroke software that you can uh, use to buy the module that is ESP thirty two that plugs in here. That actually you can add GPS and Wi Fi to, I believe. So yeah, very nice. And if we go size wise, so one of the key differences you'll notice straight away is the is the knob before you turned. That's the H2, and then you would press up and down. With this one, the way they've gone is it's like a toggle, so you turn and then you press. Let's turn it on. And I just had a look inside it, and I can see a speaker, so I had to take this apart and uh, add a speaker. So really, it's, it's plug and go now, which is very nice. I mean, it was okay taking it apart. And just remember, the porter pack, the top bit, is basically the screen, okay? And uh, it allows you to work independently of a computer and control your radio, your transmitter. And this thing, it will it can pick up, and if, you've, if you're not familiar with these terms, ADSB, this is real-time transmissions from aircrafts, AIS, boats, so you can pick up things like the MMSI, the identification location of boats, live. Of course, you need to connect an antenna. And although they've, Provided you with quite a lot of tabletop antennas and it's nice big long USB lead for charging the internal battery. You're never going to do better than an antenna on your roof or if you get out and about. If you sit there by the ocean, you're going to pick up everything with aeroplanes. That's that's really handy because their single signals are very strong. They're flying over all the time and you're going to pick up all that information. No problem at all. And then you've got the ham, you know, the ham community, which is vast. Uh, so you're always going to pick up the ham community. APRS signals, that's automatic packet signals. Um, you're going to get that, no problem. And with my previous model, I was picking up POXAC mes messages, no problem. This will pick up the, I don't know, the code or the, uh, the frequency of your Bluetooth. And it does it all visually as well. So this is all preloaded. With firmware wise, so I might not have I might not have to do the firmware yet. It's been preloaded, but when you do, you just pop it into the SD card slot, and um, let's find that just on the top here. Like so, that's your SD card slot. I know that this one 
that's me, and it's touch screen, of course. This, the right hand blue button, um, press that, and it, I've noticed it, it will reset, reboot. And I actually didn't know it had a built in speaker, so you turn, I have to get used to this, a so turn. And if we just go to the receiver and select, now you might not have all the apps yet if you haven't loaded up the, the latest firmware, which we're going to do. But let's just choose APRS. And straight away the, the speak. Let me just connect the antenna and select the frequency. So to lower the volume, what you do is turn the inner wheel. And that's moving everything. See, I'm changing the frequency there at the moment. See that? That's changing the selected item. If you click. See the way it's moving along? Go to the end, that's volume. We can lower that, we go up. You've got selections at the top here as well. As we go along, oh, so did I select something? Going to the right, look at that, I can select, turn the speaker off. And we can change the brightness as well, it was quite bright. Battery level is showing there. So you see how it works. I don't think there's a camera in this thing, but says camera there. If we go down back to APRS, enter APRS. And so the actual frequency that we use here in the UK is that's it looks like USA one there to me. It's one four four eight hundred for up uh, for us. So I look I'm there and I just I press the middle select. So there's a third selection as well. There's the outer select, the middle select and then the wheel. And so we're gonna go one four four dot eight hundred done and we should start to receive something although i haven't put the parameters in yet i'm sure we i'm just expecting to, that we will hear something at least go across there let's leave that a second seat and i've of course connected two meters and 70 centimeter antenna if you move to the left, see they've gone to the far left there and then turn the wheel, it actually selects the frequency for you. Look, we've got EU there. And as we turn, THA, AUS, BR, ISS. That's interesting. I'll leave it on EU. Let's press enter there, see if we can get a stream. How do we do this? At the moment we've got stream and then if you go to the right you've got a list there and if if it receives lots of APRS now I can hear it receiving it not decoding at the moment but you get the idea let's go to the top I'll do a dedicated video to each of the functions let's go back let's go to ADSB select this is the aircraft see if we get anything just on the antenna that I'm using now. And look, within seconds, uh, you know, just a few seconds, we've received GBKEW, and we've got the height, the speed, the, what's the AMP? Yeah, it is the, sig the signal strength where it says M AMP. That's your, again, another one, call sign there. Remember, we are just receiving and then you get further detail. I'm not sure if it will show a map without an SD card, but let's try it. Yeah. I think we need to add the SD card for that. But you can see that we've straight away, within seconds, we're getting that flight information. And it's and there's more coming in now. So that, let's go up. We'll go to the left. See, I'm going up with the up toggle and then all the way to the left here and then selecting enter. So then we can do boats. We did the APRS. Audio is a visual display of the frequencies. Uh, let's go, of course, the antenna you decide to connect is important. So let's just type enter. Can I just change the frequency now? Yeah, there you go. Enter, we're gonna go 434.550. That's a node that's near me. And let's see if we can pick that up. And we can hear it as well. There you go, we managed to get that. Let's, let's do the volume. So we're going up, we're navigating up and down to the right, and then there's our volume. Like so. 
And let's try HF frequency. We'll have to just quickly change the antenna, but we're going to go navigate again up, down. You can see it moving around. And so let's see if it will let me put in a HF one, which is 7.1500. Done. And we need to change the mode. So go to the left. Then we just turn to, we don't want lower sideband. We'll get an FM there. Look at that. You went, was that say, no, it's DSB. It just looks great, doesn't it? Bandwidth, 20 meters. Let's go down a minute. Down one and see if I can, oh, cool. That's the bandwidth, we want 3K, I would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it all now, because this is just an overview. So we're going back. There's your Bluetooth. And remember, we haven't done the SD card yet. The Poxag, I've definitely made a video on doing Poxag. That works great once you've got the right frequency in. ERT meter, weather. Get your weather frequency for all your information. Go enter. Okay, oops. So let's go up, enter. And that's the receive side. You've still got tran the transceiver, transmit. That's the recon, capture, record, replay, looking glass, utilities. So utilities, and I think we go in here to do the, the firmware. See what if there's any games on here now. No, you still need the uh, SD card. All your settings. Go back up. It's very, very similar using to using the the previous model. But having the speaker built in to me is very convenient. USB C charging. How do we exit this previous? Like so. Hack RF. Again, I need to put the. Uh, oh, yeah, you can go into just Hack RF mode. So I think when you do that, it just picks up the back, the back, you know, the main SDR unit, basically Hack RF1. And then you could plug it into your PC. Capture. Go all the way up. Oh, I don't want to. This is uh, the contributors. There's your 3.5 jack. 